Well, hi, everyone. Thank you for attending this talk. Um, today, I'll be talking about running Scala in a serverless environment. This is a beginner level talk, so I'm not assuming prior knowledge of um, serverless architecture. Um, and hopefully, it's a bit winding down after the last excellent talk. Um, so what is serverless architecture? When should I use it? When should I not? And how do I do it in practice? Let's have a demo. Um, so I, I'm not going to go into a lot of um, academia. Just what is a serverless architecture? It's an architecture where you don't worry about the infrastructure. Um, you want to run your microservices or some, some small application in the cloud. You just want it to run when it should run, such as when somebody sends a request or when a scheduled event fires or when something happens. Um, you really don't want to worry about the security of your machines that are running or um, how it would scale or how load balancing happens. You, you just want to hide all of this and just put some code together and get it running. Um, some people call this function as a service, essentially. It's, it's like an evolution. At some point, we started having EC squared uh, machines, which were like an infrastructure as a service. You could hire a machine and run on it, and you didn't worry about the hardware. But then there was platform as a service where you actually, such as Heroku, for example, you could build an application using Ruby for, or Python or other applications, and you could push it there. But you specified how many dynos you used or how much processing power you needed. With function as a service, you don't really specify that much information. All you need to do is say, how much memory do I need? And that's it. How much memory for a single invocation? You get billed by the time it runs, and that's about it. So um, when should I use it? If you're prototyping something, it's very easy to run. It's very quick to write an application for it. We'll see right now. We'll do an application in about five minutes. Um, if you're building a hobby project or if you have an application with low traffic, it's very cheap to run. If you have scheduled jobs, such as ETL jobs, for example, it's also cheap. It's suitable. Um, if, if you don't have too many people and you don't want to worry about infrastructure, VPCs, network security of the underlying infrastructure, etc. And when horizontal scalability is more important to you than guaranteed performance, and we'll see why in a moment. So, without further ado, demo time. And okay. So okay. So um, we'll we'll take our example on AWS Lambda. The same applies if you're running on Azure Functions, for example. But let's see. How do you build a very simple application? Well. We just need a normal Scala application first. So um, let me just, is this font clear? Should I zoom in? Is this good? OK. So let's just create an application. Um, Build.sbt. Project directory um, and project plugins.sbt. And all we need to do is create an application. So let's just create a file. Let's call it a demo, package demo, and class, let's call it application, for example. Run. And Franklin, hello. As simple as it can be. 
So that's it. So now what we also need is um, we need to, to be able to compile this file and package the jars as well as the Scala jars and any dependencies we have. So let's add a compiler plugin, um, project plugins. And here we'll add SBT plugin uh, com.typesafe.sbt um, SBT native packager. Uh, I believe the latest version is 1.3.19. Um, anyway. And we'll configure our build.sbt a little bit. We'll say enable uh, plugin Java app, um, was it archetype? I think so. Um, uh, and there is one setting we set, which is universal slash top, top level <laughs> directory equals none. And what this should do, if I manage to do it correctly, sorry, is that, um, assuming I remember this correctly, what we'll now do is we'll just build the project. Sorry, I mistyped this, so allow me to cheat a bit and read it from my previous um, application. Java app packaging, sorry. Uh, so, apologies for that. Okay, so we run SBT, we simply say distribute. We've created a file, we've got it right there, and now we can go to Amazon console and say we want to create an application. So we go to console.amazon, um, and I'll just go to the Lambda service. And I prefer to work in EU West because it's closer to us. So, create a function, give it a name, um, hello. We'll tell it that we're running on Java. For permissions, we'll just say basic Lambda permissions. Create the function, It takes a bit of time, but the three files that you saw were really all we need. We just upload the zip file. Uh, so the one we just created, target, universal, and this is the zip file. We'll tell it what our uh, class name is, demo, app, and the method name is run. I should zoom in, sorry. Okay, done that. Now, let's try to run it. Um, they have events so that you could pass in parameters to the, to the function. It doesn't matter what we pass to it now because we're not parsing it. Um, and we run. So now we see that it actually ran. Um, it didn't return anything, but it printed something. And this is in the logs now. We can see that we've just been built for some money. Um, so it's as simple as that. If, if you're just starting with Lambda, you can run an application in five minutes. Um, and you don't need to learn a lot about AWS, really. You just upload your zip. Trans is fine. So, um, what else could we have done? Well, if you want to, say, accept some parameters. 
so let's let's try to accept some parameters here. Um, we could say let's accept params. Now the the AWS SDK only knows about Java, so you just say a map of string and string for example. And if I say hello and we've received params, let me just make uh, let's convert it to Scala and make a, make a string out of it. And we'll just import Scala.collection.java converters. Run the this task again. Upload the new zip. Of course, all of this can be automated and you can configure your CI system to do it, but I'm just showing the easiest path, path to just start. Um, now run the test again and we'll see what happens. So we've got some parameters that were in the test events. So um, next, what if we want to, ex to configure when this function is triggered. Well, um, you can add some triggers here. You can say, I'd like it to be triggered on HTTP connections or, for example, when you receive some logs or when some file is uploaded to S3, etc., or even um, in, a, in a scheduled fashion or something like that. There are some libraries that could be used to, to help you with um, with running HTTP, for example. This one gives you a very nice API where it uses Circe for parsing JSON. You just write very little code to say, this is the kind of request I expect. This is the kind of response I expect. They are case classes. Circe will take care of the JSON serialization. You just say, I accept this request, and there I do some processing, and finally I return the result or an error or something. Um, there is also, this one is called AWS Lambda Scala. There is something called Quake, um, and it provides you a, a different API where you define your roots and write your code. You could also write a play application and run it in there. There is nothing to prevent you from running any application that runs on the JVM. So, um, bottom line, it's very easy. You could use multiple tools. Another tool that I'd like to uh, refer you to is called serverless. Um, serverless is a tool that makes managing these things from your um, local file system very easy. So let's let's have a quick example um, using serverless. So serverless create um, with the Scala template, for example. Um, sorry, I I should have created it in a different directory, but. Um, you can do this, it gives you a serverless YAML file, which most of it is just boilerplate. Um, you don't really need to change any of these if you don't want to. The bottom line is that the, the configuration is really very simple. So, just give the service a name. Let's call it hello, hello two. And we, we might want to change the region here just to make it faster. U West one. And what we got in here, what serverless generated for us is 
a few Scala files uh, as an example where you can start working with it. It's just a template. And the serverless YAML file allows you to say, well, serverless deploy. And it, it would send it directly. Of course, I need to build first. Uh, this one uses SBT assembly, so SBT assembly, then serverless deploy. But it also allows you to say, um, serverless invoke local, which allows you to test it locally as if it was in AWS. You could configure it to use a Docker image if you wish. Uh, serverless deploy. Um, it just does everything for you. Unfortunately, it takes a bit of time, about five minutes, so I leave it there and talk a little bit about when you shouldn't use um, serverless. So, when shouldn't I use it? You shouldn't use it when guaranteed performance is critical because the, the way it works is that Amazon manages multiple machines, manages Docker containers on each of these machines, and whenever it needs to scale, it downloads the <coughs> Docker container to the machine, it, um, it runs your JVM. This cold boot takes time. It could take a minute, for example. Um, usually, I've seen it take seconds, but 20 seconds could be a lot for some people. So if, if you want guaranteed performance all the time, then this is a problem. Unless you have very high traffic where all your machines are always um, hot, so it doesn't need to remove them. Um, also, if your code is spending most of its time waiting, so if it's calling into a database, then an external service and so on, You'll pay a lot just for waiting time. It's better if you could do it using callbacks, if you could send a request and say, when the result is ready, notify me, or I'll run again in five seconds and check if the result is ready, rather than um, just waiting inside the process and paying the money to AWS. If your operation is highly parallelizable, if you need many threads, then Lambda is still not not your best choice uh, because you're limited to a maximum of two cores, really. Um, and if you need more than three gigabytes of memory, you can't use Lambda. If your operation would take more than 15 minutes, you can't use it. Uh, and if you've got too many dependencies such, as, such that your jar size exceeds, I think, 50 megabytes, uh, sorry, 250 megabytes, you can't use it either. So that's it. Um, hopefully, uh, the serverless should have finished its deployment. And yes, it's, it created a stack. It uploaded your jar to S3. Um, and we can even try it out. Um, yeah, tell it which function. Yeah, we sent the function, it responded. That's because the color code in the template just does that. We could say, give it some data, and I'll say key one is um, ABC. And that's it. Thank you for listening.